and welcome to a brief clip from this week's GameSpot of Thrones. If you'd like to watch the full video, head over to youtube.com slash GameSpot. So the show's writers are dropping really clumsy, heavy-handed hints that the Tullys are going to have some kind of big resurgence and have a big part to play in the, the latter half of mm -hmm. this season. Um, they keep dropping the name of the Blackfish, who's retaken River Run, and they've also just, you know, Ed Muir's alive. You know, hey kids, remember me? Nope. No, we don't. Who are you? No, I um, I remember you, Edmure, but it, you've been gone a long time. So I thought it'd be helpful to have a little refresher in why these guys are so important. So let's start with the Blackfish himself. He's been seeded the longest, I think. So he's Brendan Tully. He's Catelyn Stark's uh, uncle, the younger brother of Hosta Tully, who's Catelyn's dad. And he's a distinguished knight, and he's been married to the job. He's quite been a successful military tactician, um, but he's never married. So, and even though his brother has set him up with some fine ladies, he loves the fishes. He's he's the black. So he, the reason he's called Blackfish is because he's the black sheep of the family, and because the Tullys love fish, he's the Blackfish, and it's stuck. It's also the name of a very harrowing documentary on Netflix about SeaWorld. Sure. But so he's called he's called the Blackfish. Uh, and in Game of Thrones, as we've seen him, he's been, he, you know, he counseled Rob uh, back when Rob was leading his... King of the North. King of the North stuff. He's eventually, you know, quite unsuccessful King of the North stuff. Uh, and he warns Catelyn just about how slippery and how dangerous Wald of Frey is. So basically, he's the only Tully <laughs> who's been speaking since. Yeah. Um, That's what makes him the Black Sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's also like the world's luckiest man because at the Red Wedding he drank too much and needed to pee and managed to escape at the exact moment that the massacre started. What a time to go for a piss. Just That's perfect. Do you think that was a coincidence? Nailed it. I don't know. Maybe he's got like some fish sense that tells him like he was just so scared. Yeah, he was here. like he was wetting himself. He's yeah. like, I gotta get out of here. Okay, yeah, sure. Gotta go. Gotta go. Um, I don't know. In Game of Thrones, I don't believe in <laughs> coincidence anymore. I like to think that he. I don't know. Would he know? Like, even if he did know, would he not warn? I mean, anyone? if he's if he's already warning people that yeah. you know Walder Frey is not a wholesome dude, mm. like he might be getting a feeling like, I don't like this man. I gotta go. And he heard the I go pee on a tree. Yeah. He heard the rains of Castamy, and he was like, yeah. I'm out. Peace. No, I'm done. rains. He was like, oh, need to pee. Need to pee. Need to pee. <laughs> Flushing meadows. Uh, so where he's been in the last couple of seasons, he's been rebuilding the Tully army, and as we know from Littlefinger, who's a trustworthy source for a change. Mm. Uh, he's taken River Run back, the homeland of the Tullys, from the Freys, which is awesome. Uh, so we also know that Brienne of Tarth is on her way to go and treat with him and try and get support for Sansa's army up in the north. Mm. But what I am thinking now is that now we know that Jaime <laughs> Lannister's on his way, is he going to have men to spare? <laughs> Hmm. Like, I assume Jamie's going to bring the Lannister hordes. They're going to have whatever support is left from the phrase. I don't know if he's managed to make build that many men. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. I mean, no one likes the, the phrase either. Yeah. Even the Lannisters, whilst they're meant to be allies, and the whole reason, like, phrase were like, oh, I'm going to kill your enemies in one fell swoop, Lannisters, because you know, she, he was meant to marry my gross daughter, and now he's not, so hmm. screw those guys. But maybe, like... You mentioned Brienne. Mm. We saw Brienne and Jamie get quite close. Mm. Uh, hang on, don't you dare take mm. Tormund Jaime oh, no, no, away no, no, from no. me. They're, they're, just, they're just good friends. They're just good friends. <sighs> no. But they, they, they became quite, quite friendly. They, they, quite they had a mutual respect for each other. Yeah, so if she turns up at the same time, mm. maybe her and Jamie can work, work something, something out. out. Like we, we see, we, we know the phrase have got Edmure mm -hmm. and the, the whole point of that him them having him is to use him to break the siege. Mm. Mm. So th there's a lot of characters in play, all yeah. with kind of their own agendas. Mm. It's basically gonna whose agenda is gonna come out on top. Yeah. And speaking of Edmure, let's have a little brief reminder of him. So he is Catelyn's brother, and he's been, as we found out, kept in a dungeon for the last three seasons. So he is, you'll remember, he's the kind of more hot-headed, emotional Tully. I guess they all are to a degree, but when, when their dad died, when Hosta died, he had to, you know, light the uh, the funeral pyre on fire with a bow and arrow, couldn't do it, just kept missing. So that's when Brynden actually got involved and was like, give me that. Um, and he's a little bit ashamed of his nephew and his hot-headedness. Mm. Um, so he's technically head of house Tully. And when Rob, 
Stark. All he needed to do was marry Walder Frey's daughter to secure that treaty, but instead he pissed him off and married, what was her name, Talisa? Can't even remember. Can't even remember all, all remember. Whenever, whenever I think about it, I just have that flashing image of the red wedding. In, uh, in Game of Thrones, they have that weird bedding ritual, which is like everyone being like, yeah, you're going to have sex. Um, and like he, you know, picked her and uh, Rosalind, uh, Frey and Edmure and took them up to their bedroom and then they just captured him. So he's just been sat there. I always assumed that they killed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah same. Enough. But um, so Edmure is now a bargaining chip. Unlucky is he? Buddy. Is he? Yeah, it doesn't seem. It doesn't. Yeah, this doesn't bode well for him. I mean, is anyone else going to really care? Like they're like, we thought you were dead already, so um, <gasps> don't really care, man. I don't know. I guess like House Tully, though they are they have strong family ties, but also I think Littlefinger might care. Yeah, because if Littlefinger, they all grew up together. So if Littlefinger's aware, which I'm, he probably is, he yeah. knows everything, I assume he's going to at least maybe send the Knight of the Veil vale there. Maybe that's where he, because Santa's Ooh. already refused his help. So maybe he helps out there first and then secures that alliance and then they all go up. So is this, like when Sansa refused the troops, mm. is that why do you think Littlefinger sewed? Like, oh, by the way, Blackfish is, uh, oh, yeah. so she knew he'd, she'd go there. He knew he, she'd go there. Yeah. Mm. And in the stalemate that's going to come from like, the, the Blackfish's troops and Jamie's troops and the mm. Frey troops. Like, Littlefinger's just going to step in with his army of, like, super veil knights and yeah. be like, listen, out. <laughs> I'd like to see that happen. Yeah. 